Well, it wasn't him. It was the T-Mobile Arena. They announced that Cyril Garn will be fighting John Jones. The relevance of that being that Francis Ngannou is not a part of the undisputed heavyweight title fight, which is coming up. And that is because he's parted ways with the company. After extensive negotiations, this has been going on for almost two years now between Dana White and Hunter Campbell. Dana said last night at the press conference that Hunter and Ngarni must have went to 350 dinners, talking over the final points of the deal, trying to come to a conclusion, trying to come to a resolution, and trying to get the Predator back inside the octagon where he belongs. Listen, they couldn't come to a deal. He's gone away. He's a free agent. They're not going to uh, hold on to that exclusive negotiation period. They've let him go completely. So Ngarni is, as of today, as of yesterday, as of whenever, he's a free agent and he can fight wherever he wants. And I think, you know, when I hear that, it's, it's, it's sad. I love watching Francis fight. I mean, some of the entertainment he broke to the octagon was just jaw-dropping and also jaw-breaking. If you were one of the heavyweights on the receiving end of some of those punches, my God. I mean, think back to that fight against Alistair Overeem, that uppercut. He nearly decapitated poor old Alistair. My God, if there's one knockout that scares you to death, it is that one there. I mean, a lot of people in attendance that night thought that Ngannou might have actually, you know, taken away Overeem's ability to live. Might have killed him inside the auction. But fortunately, that didn't happen. But my God, it was a scary one. Let's be honest. Now, uh, the reality of the situation is that this fight has, sorry, the Ngannou situation has been negotiated for about two years now. They couldn't come to a resolution. Dana White said last night at the post-fight press conference that Hunter and Ngannou talked a lot, couldn't come to it. And if he had have agreed to the deal that they offered, it would have made Ngannou the highest paid heavyweight fighter that they've ever had. Okay, now, according to MMA Junkie, I see here that Brock Lesnar was formerly the highest paid heavyweight fighter. Reportedly, at UFC 200, they paid Brock Lesnar around $8 million, which is a hell of a lot of money. Prior to that, I think for his regular fights, he was getting somewhere in the region, again, according to MMA Junkie, uh, somewhere in the region of 2 to $3 million. So certainly not a bad day's work, but Ngannou, you know, I think when he hears about potential fights with the likes of Tyson Fury in the boxing world, he's hearing these big numbers that they make and he wants to be a part of that, wants to make the most out of his career before it's time to hang it up and call it a day. And listen, good for him. That is his prerogative. We only get one career, we only get one body, and we're only young ones. So you want to make the most of it. However, how do I feel about it? Well, if he wants to go off and box Tyson Fury, in fact, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's hear from Dana White last night and see what he had to say. Yes, T-Mobile blew the fight. Uh, that wasn't supposed to go up, but it did. Um, this is for the official heavyweight title. You know, we've been working on a new agreement with Francis for like two years now. And uh, we had gotten to a point where, uh, you know, he was going to fight John Jones and many, many who believe, including me, that he's the best of all time, um, you know, for, for the heavyweight championship. And John Jones has been willing and ready and able to fight anybody. He didn't care who it was. Could have been anybody in the heavyweight division. He was ready to go. Um, and Francis, we, we offered Francis a deal that would have made him the highest paid heavyweight in the history of the company, more than Lesnar, more than anybody. Um, and he turned the deal down. So, you know, I, I don't know, you know, we, we get to this point where I, I've told you guys this before, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. Uh, you know, I think Francis is in a place right now where he wants, he doesn't want to take a lot of risk. Feels like he's in a good position um, where he could fight lesser opponents and, and make more money. So we're going we're gonna to let him do that. We're, we're going to release him from his contract. We're going to give up our right to match. And he can go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, so there it is. Yeah, uh, Francis Ngannou, no longer with the UFC, free to fight whoever. So, as I said, um, what are those options right now outside of the UFC? Without a question, when it comes to mixed martial arts, 
the UFC is the biggest player in town. And certainly when it comes to pay-per-views and all the rest of it, which is the bulk of where the money is made, okay? I think when he fought Francis, Ng uh, sorry, pardon me, when he fought Cyril Garn, his disclosed pay was only $600,000, but it's the pay-per-view afterwards. Now, this new contract would have guaranteed much, much more up front, I'm assuming. And of course, on the back end, those points would have been higher as well. So outside the UFC, where's he going to go? Is he going to go to Bellator? You know, the Bellator heavyweight division doesn't really have too much to offer. Granted, they have deep pockets and they often pay over the odds for a lot of fighters that were with the UFC. That's not an insult to Bellator or any of the fighters, but generally fighters, you know, when they lose a few, they, they, they're they out of the contract with the UFC to go to Bellator and they get paid very, very well because Bellator is still trying to compete with the UFC. So they have to do that to attract them. And 